Hello, this is the second segment of the metamorphic uh, chapter. And uh, last segment, I stopped at the classification of metamorphic rocks. And the classification happens by the pressure and the temperature. So we're going to do this so-called PT diagram. This is how I will ask it on the test. P, which stands for pressure. T, which stands for temperature and diagram. So this is the PT diagram. And on this axis, you're going to have the pressure in kilobar, which is an SI unit, from 1 to 15. 15 kilobar is pretty high. And the temperature here goes in Celsius from 0 to 800. Remember, 800 is <clears throat> where, the, where the rocks start to melt. And remember, the higher the pressure, the higher the melting temperature. So it has to go this way. And this is the igneous rocks. Here is the sedimentary. And uh, this is the metamorphic region, which means the pressure and the temperature is pretty high. So we have different situations. The first one is when you have the only the pressure, which is important, and the temperature is not that important. That's the dynamic metamorphic rocks. And it is only happens locally, mostly along fault lines. The other one is the where the temperature is mostly important. Pressure is not that important. We call that contact. Contact metamorphism. And it's also local. It happens around igneous intrusions. When, when you have an intrusion coming into the surrounding rocks, and it will change uh, the surrounding rocks. We call it contact or thermal, actually, metamorphism. And so now we have the igneous environment, we have the sedimentary environment, and this whole area here is the metamorphic environment. So we can do this diagonal figure here, and we call it regional or dynamo thermal, which, is, which means pressure and temperature increasing at the same time. Pressure and temperature increasing at the same time. So this is what we call dynamo thermal. And we divide it into three areas, the low, medium, and high-grade metamorphic rocks. Now, this PT diagram is a little bit different than what the book has. However, the, because of the way we learn the metamorphic rocks and the types we're going to learn, I kind of want you to know this simplified version of the PT diagram, okay? PT diagram. This shows you all the different... Um, rocks, all three kinds, and their pressure temperature environments. So it's kind of a good summary figure for you to remember. And if you remember this, you kind of will know your metamorphic rocks. So now let's talk about each. So first, the dynamic metamorphism. This is the place where only the pressure counts really bad. The temperature is not that important. Usually it happens along fault lines. And when there is a big fault, it will actually break, break up the rocks into fragments along the fault, and it will produce this so-called uh, very angular rock fragments as it breaks. We call it fault breccia. So it's very similar to the breccia, except all these fragments are exactly the same rocks, even though they are very, very angular. So it's fault breccia. We call this dynamic metamorphism. Now, the other one is the contact or thermal metamorphism. Here you can see an igneous intrusion, which cooled down really, really, really slow. But while it was cooling down, the temperature was really high. Pressure is not that important. So what you will see is that some of the, the surrounding rocks actually change into a metamorphic kind of rocks. And we call this like a auro or halo. And this is kind of an important because you, you will see, there is, I mean, you might not see, but if you became a geologist, you would know that in this area, there are very many, very, very important uh, mineral forms, which we really, really need. So this is the, the contact or thermal metamorphism. And the, the reason for the change is mostly the temperature and not the pressure that much. And then we have the regional dynamo thermal now the regional usually means 
long huge areas are affected by this metamorphism like if you have an oceanic continental parade boundary like the whole region the whole end is in front of the whole end is there is a big metamorphic zone which relates to this uh, burial or, or subduction related metamorphism which is regional or dynamothermal that just means that the pressure and the temperature are going up at the same time so these rocks are going to be faulted and, and uh, faulted and, and there will be a whole lot of metamorphism going on. So now we're going to go through the metamorphic rocks. You will have to know no more, but just the ones you have to know from low, medium to high grade. So starting with the low grade metamorphism. So remember when we put the PT diagram and this is the regional, the low is right where the pressure and the temperature are relatively low. The rock you will have to know here is the slate. Remember the texture of the slate is foliated. Foliated. And the minerals are in it clay minerals. So basically what we have here is baked clay. So the clay minerals are losing their water and all you have left is the, is, is, um, the aluminum silicate uh, without water. So when you hit the slate, actually, it will have a high, uh, high pitch. Yeah, that's it. I couldn't remember the word, high pitch. If you hit it to the table, it will have that really typical high pitch. The, the shale, depending on what kind of color the, the original shale or mudstone, could have been you have different color slates and as you know the slate could be used for a lot of different things but most importantly for roofing they use it or if you have a patio or hallway you can put slate in it it looks really really pretty I have seen slate actually on the side of the house too okay the next one is the firelight the firelight is still low grade so we are right here Now the only difference between the slate and the firelight that the firelight has this microcrystalline mica muscovite, microcrystalline muscovite we call sericide. So remember the texture is foliated, uh, the mineral composition is clay minerals plus sericide. And this is what makes it kind of shiny as you can see on this picture. So. When, when the fine grain muscovite, which is what we call sericide, is distributed along this foliation, it's going to give the rock a really shiny look. So it's easy to separate this from the slate. Otherwise, it's very, very similar to the slate, except, as I said, this shiny uh, um, luster, I should say. And it's called phyllite. We are still in the, in the low-grade metamorphism. Now, the next one is the medium grade the mica schist so now we are in the in the medium grade uh, region so right here and the typical rock here is the mica schist now when you have mica schist it could have its foliated texture and the minerals are like muscovite or biotite It will have, I just put bio, biotite, it could have quartz and sometimes feldspars and it always have porphyroblast which is either garnet or starolite, mostly garnet and starolite. So porphyroblasts are very, very characteristic. Uh, the next one is the high grade, high grade metamorphism. And remember now in this PT diagram, we are on top part, so the closest to the igneous rocks. And the rock here you will have to know is the gneiss. It's very, very similar to the granite. The only difference is the, the mineral bands, we call them. So you will have a black band, which is mostly biotite. You'll have white band, which is mostly k part, and um, uh, probably you will have a band with amphiboles and the even the mineral composition is very similar to the granite so the only difference is really this uh, orientation or 
you could still call it foliation somewhat but they actually call it nice texture and it will uh, look like that it has mineral bands different minerals will make a different mineral band actually and now we are at the non foliated texture in this group like when you look at the different grade of metamorphism it doesn't really matter because if you start with quartz sandstone quartz sandstone that just means that it has only one mineral in it which is quartz so as it recrystallizes the only thing it could recrystallize into is another quartz because that's the only composition there so it will become quartzite it won't have foliated texture it's going to have this crystalline or sucralose non-foliated texture so therefore when you look at a rock which is a quartzite you won't be able to tell at what grade it formed because it doesn't make any diff it doesn't change at all so it's impossible to put it in what grade it formed that so it could form at low medium or high grade and the same with the next one which is the marble remember the marble you don't remember but the marble is calcium carbonate just like the limestone calcium because it forms from limestone when you have limestone and it metamorphoses the only thing it can recrystallize into is calcite so it's calcium carbonate don't forget when you put hydrochloric acid on it it's gonna fizz so marble will fizz when you put hydrochloric acid on it now what color the marble is depending on what color the limestone was the marble is going to be very similar so if it was dark gray the marble is going to be dark gray if it was white the marble is going to be white if the limestone was yellowish reddish then it's going to be uh, pinkish or reddish marble so what do you think is it a good idea to put marble outside to cover buildings or to make a headstone out of it i hope you said no because it just talked about it that when you put hydrochloric acid it's gonna fizz like it will effervesce the co2 comes out of it so therefore when you put it in an environment where the rain is acidic it's not such a good idea to use the marble uh nice garnet not garnet sorry granite nice granite uh, labradorite remember those are beautiful stones which are gonna stay forever just like that so you should never 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 use marble nor limestone for a matter of fact because the acid rain eats them up away pretty quickly so you want to use rocks for outside purposes which can stand the weather like granite labradorite nice those are very good choices but marble is not This here is about the index minerals. When you have a metamorphic process, uh, remember I told you the most important thing that when the pressure and the temperature increasing, the mineral is becoming unstable and they will have to recrystallize into a more stable mineral at the given temperature. Therefore, when you look at a metamorphic rocks and you define what minerals are in it, you will be able to tell the pressure temperature environment it formed in based on the minerals minerals which are sensitive for the pressure and temperature and we call those minerals index minerals as you can see the quartz the gay feldspar will for, form any metamorphic environment however all these other ones no so when they are present you know the grade of metamorphism so we call these uh we call these index minerals and this very last slide is just talking about the parent rock and what kind of rocks are forming from them at low, medium, and high grade metamorphism. I kind of would like you to know the, the uh, phasic igneous rocks oriented into, into mica schist and gneiss and stuff like that. You don't really need to know all of them, but just know that this is the process of metamorphism. That as the metamorphism happening as the temperature and the pressure increases the the original rock has to go through all these steps to become let's say if the pressure and temperature makes it all the way to high then it's going to become nice but depending on what kind of rock you started with because i told you that the original chemistry got to be equal in the in the in the 
metamorphic rocks chemistry so therefore it defined by the original rock what kind of metamorphic rock it can form so if you start with a mafic igneous rocks we didn't really learn these metamorphic rocks but it's going to finish up as ecologite or or so you can be happy you didn't have to know all this stuff but there are other than the ones you have to learn there is a lot more different metamorphic rock actually so that's the end of the metamorphic rocks and I will see you.